start off, I'm going to have you work in pairs. I'll have you guys work in three, and you guys can work together. I'm going to pass out what's called a word sort. And what it is, is a list of words, and every word has something in common. So all of the words on the whole list have something in common, okay? I'm going to give you about one minute to decide what it is. And if you know what it is, then go ahead and raise your hand. I don't want anyone to shout it out. Okay, one and then go. Every word? <laughs> I know what it is. Okay, raise your hand if you know what it is. I don't I want to know that every group is ready to tell me what it is. Are you guys ready? <laughs> okay, who can describe what it is or who knows the word for what it is? Ethan, you know? It's a homophone. They're homophone. Perfect, exactly. Yeah. Okay, all these words are homophones. Alright? Today we're gonna to talk about homophones though. Who can give me some examples? You've got some on your list. Go ahead and say some out loud if you want to. <coughs> All right, how do we tell the difference between homophones when we are writing? Uh, when you're reading no. something, okay, they're spelled differently, right? So it's pretty easy when you're reading something to tell the difference. What about when you're speaking? How do you tell the difference? The way you the way you use it in the context, okay? So sometimes when you're speaking, you have to, when someone's speaking to you, you have to listen and say, all right, they said they really want a piece of cake. Are they talking about world peace? <laughs> or are they talking about a part of a whole? Okay, so it's pretty obvious sometimes. However, sometimes there's words that get confused because we're not really clear about what they mean or how to use them. Uh, there's some with texting or email, <laughs> Facebook, what did you say? There, there, and there. All right, they sound the same when we're speaking, <laughs> but it's not. Your and your. Your and your. Okay, so today we're going to talk about those really confusing ones, and it's going to be a piece of cake to tell them apart by the end, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're going to start with your, and we'll call it apostrophe your, because if I just say your and your, they're homophones, they're going to sound the same, right? So it's confusing. Alright, what does this word your mean? How do you use it? What does it mean? What does it mean? So it's possessive, so it shows ownership, right? So like your piece of cake, your backpack. It's gonna be easy in just a sec. How about this one with an apostrophe? What does an apostrophe tell us when there's an apostrophe in a word? Contraction. It's a contraction. Okay. Contraction. It's a contraction. Alright, Clayton, what were you gonna say? Uh, it's a contraction. <laughs> contraction. I know. It's a contraction, it means the two words have been put together. Alright? And what does this little apostrophe represent? The A. The missing letters. The missing letters. It's an A in this case. Okay, you smash two words together, the letter goes flying out and it leaves a string. <laughs> leaves an apostrophe, okay? So in this case, you said an A is missing, so what two words do minds make your pair? You are. You are. You are a piece of cake. Thank you. An example, right? So when we use the phrase you are, how do we use that? Alright, your. What's a trick you can use? To decide if you need to use the possessive your or the apostrophe your. Clayton, what do you think? Usually I say you are. And so it's like, if it doesn't work with you are, don't use it. I would like you are hair. <laughs> Perfect, okay? That is, that is a really easy trick. That's probably the easiest way to tell the difference. Take these words, you are, and put them in the sentence. Alright, do you guys have any questions about this? Does it kind of make sense? Generally, all right. Just to make sure, and because it's a little easier to put it on paper in practice, we're going to do a couple of practice sentences. All right. So I want you to take out a piece of paper. If you need to borrow one from your friend, that's fine. I want you to write the entire sentence along with filling in the blank with either your or apostrophe your. Okay. And the reason I want you to write the whole sentence out is because you're going to use this to review the test. And if you just have the word next to the number, you're not really going to be able to study. But if you can see it used correctly in the sentences, or if you don't, and I show you how to use it correctly, then you can use it to study, okay?